It's a city that's hosted all sorts of parties. But it's never seen anything like this. We're really excited and we cannot wait to showcase Milwaukee to the world. 50,000 people are coming to town. That's a great bump to the economy, obviously. Those who aren't coming will be watching. We have a chance to showcase Milwaukee. History will be made. We have an opportunity, all of us do, to help Milwaukee to shine. And we're making sure you're ready. This is Conventional Wisdom. Welcome to day two of Conventional Wisdom from the RNC in Pfizer Forum. Yesterday during the show, we learned there was a vice presidential pick that had been made. What are we going to learn today? Who knows? It's an unscripted show, Stephanie Grady. <laughs> It certainly is. And we have Milwaukee Mayor Cavalier Johnson here with us today. So happy to have you along, Mayor. We do know that right behind us, the announcement that came yesterday with the VP pick, that VP pick is going to be doing a little bit of a walkthrough. We know that J.D. Vance is going to be giving his speech come Wednesday evening, which is typical for convention time. Uh, but Mayor, this is day two of the convention. So much time and effort has been putting has been put in to make this what it is. How do you think it's been going so far? It's been going pretty well uh, so far. I started doing these morning briefings uh, every day uh, at 6.30 a.m. Oh, thank you. You're good. And um, I get an update uh, from uh, uh, all sorts of you know, folks in the city about what's going on. Uh, I've got my own experience reaching out and touching uh, and talking to people who are attendees to the convention, whether they're delegates, whether they're journalists or, or the like. Folks are really, really enjoying Milwaukee, uh, so much so that I've had a number of folks say to me that, you know, they're looking forward to coming back with their families and spending time here. Like they can see themselves vacationing here. Which so is what we wanted. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So so things are, are going pretty well. Um, we've had some arrests uh, uh, the past couple of days, very few very minor uh, incidents of the having folks been in intoxicated, uh, just one or two people. But uh, other than that, things have been going pretty well. Delegates or visit are visitors who have been intoxicated, or I locals who have been intoxicated. <laughs> and no, I, I honestly. Yeah, I don't. I don't know those. Don't know. Okay. I don't know those details. Just the individuals. But near somehow the RNC related. Yeah, gotcha. in or fair near enough, the fair enough to say. Yeah. Um, your your answer to your question, Stephanie's question, was pretty well. What's not going as well as you like? That you you sort of qualified it. Uh, why no, pretty I, well and not and why not smashing? Well, uh, I, I, who gets an A, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. God, even, God I don't, knows, I never did. I yeah. well, exactly. No. It's a, it's <laughs> this exactly. one over here. Did, but, yeah. <laughs> exactly, it's the same sort of thing. But no, I think things are going very very well. Um, I think, uh, given some of the uh, questioning that I had this morning at the uh, 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 press conference that I do, uh, there were some questions about. Uh, traffic flow at uh, some of the area restaurants um, uh, and the like. So maybe that's a qualifier as to why it's not, you know, excellent. And there's a reason for that from my understanding, speaking with Visit Milwaukee, um, is that yesterday when folks typically would have been out, you know, going to restaurants and things like that, there were announcements here mm -hmm. that uh, Mr. Trump was going to come into the, into the convention hall, which he did, but it was delayed and delayed and delayed, and folks didn't want to leave because they didn't want to miss him. I mean, he just – survived an assassination mm -hmm. attempt, for crying out loud, right? right. So they want to see their candidate. Um, and so they visited Convention Fest here uh, and then just stayed in close proximity, didn't go out to bars. Yesterday. Well, and yesterday, I mean, even during the day for lunchtime, I mean, we were over at Public Market. We had a camera over there. And not only did we have a session here, like yesterday was a two-day session type day. The rest of the days are just a one session in the evening. So a lot of people weren't out for lunch because they were here. They were they, here. They, yeah. The nomination was happening, all that sort of stuff. Um, but, you know, even yesterday, I mean, at the Public Market, all of your businesses, so many of them told people to work from home. So even people who live in the city of Milwaukee sure. are kind of keeping their distance, which is understandable. So hopefully things have changed a little bit today with everyone kind of out and about and visiting the Harley Museum and doing those sorts of things. You know, you mentioned the assassination attempt on Saturday. You have been right in the middle of the national spotlight. You've been on all the major news networks with these press conferences that have happened, talking with the Secret Service, seeing if anything was changing in terms of their footprint in and around the city of Milwaukee. So far, security-wise, what is your take just seeing the amount of security surrounding this place? You know, I've sort of equated this to taking the, the national security apparatus in Washington, D.C., like around the White House and like, and picking that up and planting it in the middle of Milwaukee. It's sort of similar to that. And, you know, uh, again, you mentioned and I mentioned, you know, the uh, attempt on uh, Mr. Trump's life uh, this past Saturday, which, by the way, is horrible. I absolutely horrible, deplorable, should never happen to really? anybody 
doesn't matter if you're a kid going to school like we've seen in this country, doesn't matter if you're a church goer, going to the grocery store like we've seen here, or if you're a candidate for, for president. Even you know somebody that I've you know had disagreements with, nobody wants to see anybody get hurt. That is just totally out of line. Um, but that event, that rally, is much different than what we have here at the RNC. Uh, this event, uh, unlike that one, is the highest designation for safety that you can get in the country, a, a, a national a special security uh, event. And so it's literally, by def definition, the, the, the highest level of security. When you heard about it on Saturday, were you concerned that there might be a delay in the convention or changes in any way non-security, whether it be schedule or people coming to town, or do they assure you pretty quickly, no, we're coming, it's on? Uh, it, it turned around pretty quickly that mm -hmm. you know, things were going to continue to happen, things were going to continue to go on. Uh, I, I did have some concern that there may have been some, some sort of delay uh, um, and things like that, but again, uh, pretty soon thereafter it was indicated that we were still going to go on. Still going on as planned. There was a party that was held on Sunday for everyone who had made it into town already. And we know, we talked to some delegates yesterday, they didn't get in until the very early morning hours of Monday morning. So they missed the big welcome party down at the Summerfest grounds. Did you have a chance to head over there? I did. How was it? It was great. Yeah? It was absolutely great. Do you think it put our best you know, foot forward when I came to showing what Milwaukee and Wisconsin has to offer? Oh, yeah. I mean, for folks to be able to be down there and, I mean, at least be on the Summerfest grounds if they had never been to the festival. Mm -hmm. I mean, for many folks, this is their first time coming to Wisconsin at all. So mm -hmm. Milwaukee is their first impression, like almost like a quarter of the people who visit the state, right? They interface with Wisconsin by coming here. Um, but for a lot of these folks who have never been here, never been to Milwaukee, never been to Wisconsin, never seen Lake Michigan, like for them to be able to see it and say, hey, I can't see a cross. You know, it's, it's, it's like an ocean. It's, it's <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's practically an ocean out there. Right. Right. That was really surprising to folks, and I mean, even <laughs> after that, uh, people were telling me they were walking you know, up and down uh, the lakefront, you know, went to, you know, uh, Veterans Park and went up to Bradford Beach and just were like totally, totally impressed. I said that, uh, you know, going to the beach and seeing some of the improvements there, County Executive Crowley must have been pretty proud about that. Right. <laughs> well, we're so used to that, that reaction. I didn't know this was such a great city. Yeah. And well, like, that's not on us. That's on you. You should have come <laughs> here earlier. We've all hosted parties at our home, and we all have rules. Sometimes people say, I need you to take your shoes off. Sometimes people say, no smoking, you got to go out in the back to smoke. You've been a pretty gracious host, but something happened where you said, no, 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 you're not going to do that. You are not going to turn Herb Cole way into Donald Trump way. How did you hear that that had happened and you clearly fixed the situation? Yeah, you know, um, I, I Social media being what it is, I mean, I got a notification uh, that that had uh, that that had happened. And look, I mean, some things are are bigger than politics, mm -hmm. right? And Herb Cole's legacy is bigger than politics. It just is. It doesn't matter if you're a Democrat. It doesn't matter if you're a Republican. Look, I think if you're a Democrat or a Republican and you look at Herb Cole's electoral victories in a state like Wisconsin that's decided on the razor on a razor's edge, you respect that. You respect his uh, business approach. You respect the fact that we're sitting in Pfizer Forum that would not be here right now if it were not for Herb Cole. So Indeed. And, and for viewers who don't know what I'm talking about, out in the Deer District, there is a, a walkway that's called Herb Cole Way in honor of the late senator. Uh, actually, was named when he was still with us, and they had covered up with Donald Trump. And you said, hey, folks, th that one I'm not going to have you do. Yeah, we're, we're, we're not doing that. And, and, and by the way, if it was, you know, Donald Trump, you know, that needs to come down. If it was Joe Biden, that needs to come down. Some sure. things are just bigger than politics. Uh, Herb's legacy certainly uh, is one. Um, so we wanted to respect that. And by the way, when I reached out to the Republican uh, National uh, Committee folks, they understood right away, and it got taken down right away. No argument back and forth no on argument. that. When we had you on our podcast originally, pre-convention, weeks before the convention, Ted asked you if you were okay giving away the keys to the castle so to speak, in terms of you're kind of allowing the Republican Party to come in here and do a really good job of showing off our, off our city and doing it well and keeping things peaceful and really showcasing what we have to offer. On day two, do you think that they're holding up their end of the bargain? Are you proud to have the RNC here? Yeah, I mean, every interaction that I've had with folks has been a positive interaction. Every single one. Uh, like, I haven't met any person who has had a, a negative interaction um, who's attended the convention in, uh, 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 in one way or another, whether you're a journalist, whether you're a delegate, uh, or, and things like that. So things have been really good. Um, and so I give a lot of credit uh, to the organizers. And everybody worked together to make this happen. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's all been turning out very, very well. So I'm, I'm, I'm pleased. We were wondering at that time of the first podcast, because you were so instrumental 
in getting this convention here. And because so many Republicans said, man, that Milwaukee mayor, he really made the sale for it. We were wondering if you were having a spot where you could address the delegates. First day came and went. We didn't see your name on the list. <laughs> How about day two, day three? Have you gotten any indication that you might be welcome to s say hello? Or would that have been a first night thing and that ship has sailed? Uh, that's probably more of a first night thing. Um, we also have to remember, right, the, the the recent history. I mean, that was you know two years ago that we were you know vying for this, and we didn't even know who the Republican nominee was going to be at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you you know deal with some of the recent history. Mr. Trump made his comments. I made my you know return comments, and so maybe there's a thing there. I don't know. <laughs> oh, with the horrible city comments. Uh -huh, yeah. uh -huh. But everybody's right. having a everybody. All the Republicans are having a great time I, in a horrible. I city. haven't heard a single delegate say it's a horrible <laughs> city. In fact, just the opposite. I don't think so yeah. either. Just last question here. Any last thoughts as we head into days three and four? Obviously, I mean, this is the culmination of two years of work. Yeah, you know, uh, again, I think that things have been going incredibly well, incredibly smoothly. I'm happy uh, about that. Uh, I'm really thankful to uh, the folks in law enforcement, really from the federal level down to the local level and all of their partnership. Uh, I'm happy that uh, businesses are engaging and welcoming uh, to folks uh, here. I'm happy that the citizens of Milwaukee uh, have been uh, kind, as we generally are to folks when they're coming to uh, our city. Um, I'm just happy this is a good, uh, a positive moment for Milwaukee. We're elevating this city. Um, there are images of Milwaukee being beamed into living rooms and to C-suites, uh, not just across the United States, but literally around the world mm -hmm. right now. Right, so Milwaukee is is a city on the rise, um, and I'm really happy about that. So that's something that all of us should be proud of. There's Australian television down there. There's British television there. I know there's a Univision, which is broadcasting to the Latino world. So there's Iranian television yeah, over it, in it, the Baird Center. Yeah, I mean, exactly. you talk about global. It's global. Yeah, I, I spoke yesterday to uh, a, a gaggle of like I think 30 plus. Uh, uh, foreign media uh, outlets uh, all at once organized by the State Department, um, you know, just the other day. So from, you know, Brazil to Thailand, from, you know, the UK and beyond. I mean, just had a someone from Ireland in my office just before coming here um, to, to, to meet with you all. So um, Milwaukee is being recognized globally right now. And again, that's something that all of us should be proud of. And you're basking in it a little bit. Yeah, this is good yeah. for Milwaukee. And, and as I've always said, what's good for Milwaukee is good for Wisconsin. Love it. Mayor Cavalier Johnson, our guest today on Conventional Wisdom. Uh, I was going to say, when do you sleep? But after this is over, you got the Harley and you got <laughs> NML coming and down. You, you, you're not going to sleep all summer. So. <laughs> no. <laughs> He's also got a couple young kids, too. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, That's that right. plays into it. <laughs> Thanks for your time, sir. We appreciate it. We're going to take a quick break. We're about to wrap things up here on Tuesday's edition of Conventional Wisdom from the RNC. We've been waiting for Vice Presidential nominee um, J.D. Vance mm -hmm. to come to a sound check. He's not speaking tonight. He's supposed to speak Wednesday night. But I got to thinking. Yeah, Stephanie, of course. Oh, that's never okay, a good thing. Okay, this is one. You know me. I, I love the presidential history. The last time we had a vice presidential candidate with a beard. <laughs> Think about it, Right. Mike right. Pence didn't no. have one. Uh, you never even saw stubble on that guy. didn't have one. No. Nope. Right. Joe Biden, when he was running for vice president, didn't have one. I'm not the only one thinking about this. Got to give credit to the New York Post. They came up with this, and they thought the same. Okay. Charles Fairbanks Jr., a senator from Indiana who was tabbed by Teddy Roosevelt. Wow. You had to dig that deep, Yeah, huh? to run in the early 1900s. And technically, his was a goatee, not a full beard. But that doesn't even count. Though. I know it doesn't even count. But if he is elected, JD Vance would be the first vice president in more than a hundred years to have a beard. We were in through a long stretch, starting with Lincoln. Okay. Who, you know why Lincoln grew a beard? Um, to make himself look more manly and have more of a chin. Pretty much so. An eleven-year-old, like most men. An eleven-year-old girl wrote him and said, "You'd be more handsome. Your face is very thin. You'd be more." <laughs> And Lincoln took it that It served advice. him well, I think. So he was our first bearded president, and it went all the way to Benjamin Harrison. We had a nice run there of bearded commanders in chief. Every time I look behind us, because, like you said, we are supposed to have J.D. Vance doing a walkthrough. Of course, he's given the speech on Wednesday night here. Every time, because we're a little bit far away, every time I see a guy on stage with a beard, I'm like, is that him? Is that him? Right. That I, him? There was just a young man walking up the steps with a beard. I'm like, oh, no, that's <laughs> not him. There's Besides presidential politics, when you think of just men with beards, who comes to mind first? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, it's probably well, somebody presidential. Now it's got to be JD. Now it's going to be JD Vance. I mean, me. I think Wolverine. Oh, <laughs> so okay. there you go. 
That's where my mind goes is Hugh yeah. Jackman. I think of my brother Marty, who back in his rugby playing days had a nice beard, so that's where I go. You like to rock the beard every time you come back from vacation, and yeah. then they tell you to shave it by the time you get to the TV get, station. Get that possum off your chin, please. So uh, This has been fun today, Ted. It is fun. We thank the mayor for coming by. We thank the delegate of the day, Maya Conrad of Tennessee. She was lovely. We've got to come up with a delegate of the day tomorrow. Oh, we will. We There's have more than 2,415 2, <laughs> choices. No one's turned us down yet. That is true. Yeah. They're all happy to be here, and we are happy to have them. And we're happy to have you along on day two of Conventional Wisdom. We will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow.